So look, ultimately, y'all, these Atomic Habits that you're creating, there's a great book called Atomic Habits. Y'all check that out. But here's a cool thing. It deals with the difference between goals and systems and really talks about how goals is about, here's my note, here's my notes exactly. Goals are about the results you want to achieve. Systems are about the processes that lead to those results. Goals are good for setting a direction, but systems are best for making progress. And here's what was deep in the book. Winners and losers have the same goal. Both winners and losers might set the same goal to achieve. But the reason that the winners win is because they put these systems and these processes behind the scenes in order to allow them to win. So you think about somebody like Michael Jordan, anybody in the NFL. It wasn't just because they wanted to win the championship that it got won. It was during the offseason when nobody else was putting in the work. When nobody was at the gym yet, they showed up a little bit early to get that practice in. They studied game film. They studied themselves. They studied their competitors. That's how they win. So it doesn't matter that you want to have an amazing business, that you want this thing to have a million dollar profit. You have to create these systems that are going to help you win. If the stuff that's going on behind the scenes is really hurting you, then that's the reason why you're not winning. So let me go on with my notes. Achieving a goal is only a monetary change. Goals restrict your happiness. So meaning by that, if you're only focused on the goal and not the process, so you're not respecting the process, you're not enjoying it, having fun, then you're literally restricting your happiness because you only focus on this one thing that's such a lofty thing that you have no idea actually how you're going to really get there. Like many people say, I want to be wealthy, Manny. I want to be very successful. Get me there. I can't get you there if you're not willing to do all the steps that's going to get you there. And I've said this yesterday on the live video this morning, yesterday morning, was that most athletes that are great and even phenomenal, you never see them having average actions on the court, during practice. They know that they got to get it in. All right, let me go on. The purpose of setting goals is to win the game. The purpose of building systems and to, the purpose of building systems is to continue playing the game. So you don't want to just have a million dollars, reach $10,000 a month, leave your job. You want to be able to stay off your job and never have to go back. You want to be able to build consistent wealth and that thing just keep going higher and higher and higher. Then every single blessing that you're praying about asking God for, he like, yeah, I'm going to give it to you because I know that this person go put in the work. You do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. I hope y'all caught that and I'm going to explain it. You do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. So it don't matter how high or how low the goal is. If you ain't got no good system in place in order to achieve that particular goal, then it never happens. Think about a person that says, I want to lose weight. Well, weight is not the problem. The, the weight on them is not the problem that they want to lose. Going to the gym is not going to end the problem with the weight. It's creating the systems behind the scenes and say, you know what? We don't eat this type of stuff no more. We don't eat as much as this type of stuff no more. Maybe we're eating our food a little bit slower. Y'all see we're creating these systems. You know what? I drink water every single day. That way I know I'm kind of flushing some of the stuff inside my body out. So now I'm changing the system going on behind the scenes so I can be much more successful. You want to have a successful business. People keep telling you, hey, you need to be marketing more on social media. So in order for you to be successful, you can't just say, I want to show up on social media. I'm going to watch some videos and see how other people are doing it. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. It doesn't work like that. But if you create a system behind the scenes and say, you know what, regardless of the outcome of the results, Three days a week, I'm going to post on social media. Just three. Now, if you if you were my client, I might tell you to post a little bit more depending on the situation. But let's just say for this example, to create a better system in order for you to become an influencer on, on social media, if that's the ultimate goal, right? I'm going to post three times a week on social media. I'm going to make sure I'm also posting on my stories. And this is separate than the three times that I'm posting. And I'm going to attack them exactly where I know that my target audience is. If that's on Facebook, I'm going to be on Facebook. I'm going to be on Instagram on a consistent basis. I'm going to go to TikTok sometimes. I'm going to be on LinkedIn. And this is not to say I want you to exhaust yourself or to put all this extra pressure. But if you know that you just scroll in any way, and let's be honest, y'all. You, you know how we'd be. we just be scrolling anyway. So if you're on social media... Might as well be doing something productive at least three days out the seven 
Three days out of seven days, if you can be productive, I guarantee that things will begin to change. But again, this is just literally creating a different system. This is you now interacting with other people. You're changing the way that you do things in order to actually achieve the goal. So this is how we get there. Now, uh, we got to talk about the habits part now. Changing our habits is changing to, is, is, is for, for two reasons. Changing our habits is challenging, excuse me, for two reasons. Here's the reason why it's so challenging to change these habits as we think about growing and building us a very successful brand. We try to change the wrong thing. We try to change our habits in the wrong way. Now, let's talk about that. The first one, we try to change the wrong thing. If you're that person that's saying, I want to have a really great business, but I'm going to do what everybody else is doing. No. Mm -mm. Nope. You, you, you can't say... I'm going to do this particular thing to get this particular outcome if you have no idea the works that's that the work that is required in order to get there. So some of these people are literally trying to change the wrong thing. They say, okay, it's my marketing. No, the marketing is not the problem. You're just not showing up. You you catch that? Sometimes you might think, well, I'm not posting enough. No, it's not time to step it up on the post. It's now to re really time to sit back and strategize on the type of posting that you're putting out. Because you can be doing things the wrong way. It's just like somebody uh, going 80 mi miles an hour in their car, but it's not even moving. Like they got their foot on the gas. Vroom, 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 vroom. You're not going anywhere. You're literally doing the wrong thing in order to produce change. So now it's restructuring, it's rethinking. How am I presenting my product to the people that I say that I want to serve? Are, are they engaged enough with me? Maybe it's not pushing out more content. Maybe it's sitting back and developing a plan, getting a strategy, maybe even hiring a coach to help me systematically attack social media the way that is going to best benefit my brand and get more people finding out about me. I'm going to give you an example. There's a company called Mrs. Fields Cookie. I don't know if it's everywhere, but it was here in Cleveland, Ohio. And when she first started, she had these amazing cookies that never changed, but nobody knew anything about it. So she kept trying to sell it, sell it, sell it. Nobody was buying because they hadn't tasted it yet, right? So she decided, you know what? I'm gonna just give some free samples away. It wasn't the same size of the regular cookie. It was like little bite-sized pieces. She gave them out. Everybody loved them because they loved them and got a taste of them. Hope you all catching this already. Then they came to purchase more of her cookies at the store simply because they finally tasted it. So in terms of like changing your brand and your habits, maybe you're just doing it the wrong way. Maybe you're expecting everybody to get super excited and spend a thousand dollars with you, five hundred dollars with you, buy your ebook, buy your your uh, paperback book but they have no reason to buy from you. Maybe if you're an author, this is just a little quick hack, a little suggestion real quick. If you want it, I'm gonna give it to you. Maybe you send them out your email list, the first chapter and say, hey y'all, um, this week, I'm giving y'all the first chapter of my book. I want y'all to check it out and get excited about it. I know that y'all ain't never read nothing like this. I want you to just have a sneak peek. If you're somebody that has a product-based company, maybe you sent out some free samples after contacting about 10 to 20 people every single day through social media and say, hey, I got this amazing product. I know that you've never had it, never tried it. Would it be okay if I send you a free sample? They say yes. You send that sample out. Now, I would be very strategic with this approach because you don't want any and everybody. Study that page a little bit to make sure that they have a large enough following that can garner you some more attention if they receive your product and post it on their page because you can get a bunch of people just promoting your product on their page, but if they don't have any influence themselves, then that's not really going to benefit you. Um, so I would say like really sticking between 2000 to... 10,000 to 20,000. I wouldn't go any higher than 20,000 because some of these individuals within that space of having a lot of followers might reject your offer because they don't see it as beneficial to them, especially if you're not paying them. Um, but just promoting their, your product might not be that beneficial. But these other people are trying to get some brand deals anyway. So that would be really, really good for them. So anybody from having 2,000 followers to maybe 10 to 20,000 followers if you want to use this particular strategy of giving out some free samples, it works like crazy. 
But again, changing our habits, we try to change in the wrong way. So let's move on. Uh, we also try to change our habits. Uh, hold on. The first one was we try to change the wrong thing. This last one is we try to change our habits in the wrong way. So I want you to be very honest with yourself. Is what you're doing right now, are you going in the wrong direction? Like, is it is it benefiting your business? Is it benefiting your brand with the approach that you're using? We're change, trying to change these habits. But here's what's really exciting, though. So in my notes, I got these three layers of behavior change, right? Three layers of re- behavioral change. The first layer is changing your outcome. This is good, y'all. Listen up. Take notes if you can. Um, this level is concerned with changing your results, losing weight, publishing a book, winning a championship. Most of the goals you set are associated with this level of change. This is the first layer of change. The second layer is changing your process. This level is concerned with changing your habits and systems, implementing a new routine at the gym, decluttering your desk for better workflow, developing a meditation practice. Most of the habits you build are associated with this level. Here's the third one. The third and deepest level layer of change is your identity. This level is concerned with changing your beliefs. This is good, y'all. This is good. This level is concerned with changing your beliefs, your worldview, your self-image, your judgment about yourself and others. Most of the beliefs, assumptions, and biases you hold are associated with this level. So literally, these are the three layers of behavioral change and why it's so difficult to change certain habits, because most people want to change just on that first layer of, yes, I'm going to publish this book. Yes, I'm going to win this championship. Yes, I want to lose weight. Yes, I want to have this amazing brand and business. But how are you going to get there? The second layer is deep, but not as deep as the third one. So the second layer is concerned with changing the habits and the systems, like identifying what am I doing every day that's actually helping me. Um, I often give my author clients this suggestion to write a book to get that book done because I get I get so many stories of people saying, man, I've been trying to work on this book for five years, 10 years. Why can't I write the book? But they finally come to me as a coach and I get it done for them quicker because I say, I want you to write one sentence a month. And they say, Manny, that's ridiculous. What do you mean one sentence in a whole month? I can do more than that. I say, okay, prove it. Show me that you can do more than one sentence in a month. Because for this past five years, 10 years that you've been trying to write the book, you ain't got it done. So why don't you try something different? So this practice for new authors that ain't even wrote their book, that maybe you get into like this thing of writer's block and procrastination, try to write one sentence in a whole month. And it might seem absolutely ridiculous to you, but it works because as soon as you get done, start writing, you say to yourself, I'm going to show Manny up. I know that I can write more than a month. He's trying to play games with me like that. That's all they want me to do. Watch me write more. Most clients in this particular scenario, they end up writing four to five pages in that month just because it was their goal to show me that they could do it. Come on, y'all. So that second layer is is concerned with changing the habits in the process, implementing a new routine at the gym. Maybe while you're at the gym, the reason why things aren't going as successful with you because you don't have no good routine. You literally are just going from bench to bench and trying different things and seeing somebody else, but you don't have no strategy yourself. Life is about strategy. Achieving your goals is about strategy. Getting to the place of wealth and abundance for you to have a dope brand. It's all about strategy and implementation. If you don't have any strategy, it's very hard to implement on anything. That's why you go to the gym and you go to a couple of different uh, sections and you're like, all right, I'm done. I, I did something. But if you had a routine, you know that you were supposed to be there for an hour. If you know that you had a routine, you know that you were supposed to do this many reps on this many bars, this uh, section, got to do this, got to do some um, some ab stuff, got to do some leg day. But without a system, you literally are just trying to achieve a goal and have no direction at all. This is another reason why it's so challenging for people to lose weight, because you have as your goal, I'm going to lose weight, but have no idea what's the strategy going to be. Are you going to hire somebody to help you get there? Are you going to incorporate more water? Are you eating your food slower now? Are you cutting back on certain things? And, and, and it's more than anything got about else about a lifestyle change. Like if you say you want to be a successful business owner, it does not mean that for three months you can work hard to act like you're a successful business owner. Then the next three months or five years and you can go back to being lazy. 
No, every single person that you see that's highly successful, they put in the work and they stay putting in the work. It has to literally be a change of who you are. So again, the second layer is changing your process. This level is concerned with changing your habits and systems, implementing a new routine at the gym, decluttering your desk for better workflow. For those that have a messy desk, like literally cleaning things up around you, literally cleaning your car up, cleaning your closet out. I want some of y'all to just clean your closet out this weekend. Clean. When you start to declutter stuff, you naturally allow yourself to be less anxious because every time you open up that closet, you're like, ah, oh, this messy closet again. I'm going to clean it up one day. All oh, these clothes I still need to fold. All oh, these clothes I need need to do all oh, this business. I know I need to write this email. I know I need to write a social media post, but I, I just can't do it. You're not motivated because you don't have any systems in place. If you have the system, then you know on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, these are the only days that you're going to do social media posts. So on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, you don't even put no pressure on yourself. So the rest of these days, if you just want to be scrolling, that's totally fine. But you have to identify these days that you're going to be productive in order for real change to happen. Okay, these are the three layers of behavior change for those just got on. I'm going to make sure that this is also saved on my page. The first one was the, the layer of outcomes. That particular layer, the first one was concerned with changing just the result itself, losing the weight, publishing a book, winning the championship, having a successful business. The second layer is changing your process. This level is concerned with changing the habits and systems, implementing a new routine at the gym, decluttering your desk, developing a new meditation practice. Uh, most of these habits are built and associated on this level. The third one, this is the one I really want to talk about, y'all. The third and deepest layer is changing your identity. This level is concerned with changing your beliefs, your worldview, your image, your judgment about yourself and others. Most of the beliefs, assumptions, and biases you hold are associated with this level. So in order for you to have real, real drastic major change, you have to change your identity of who you are. Many, many of you have heard me talk about this before when I referenced Joe Dispenza and uh, his book, Breaking the Habits of Being Yourself. Like You literally got to change some of these habits of being you every day. And I'm not saying that you can't be yourself, but it really, at its deepest level, what does that mean? Like, I, I got to be me. Who are you? Like, really, who are you? Since we are individuals that are adaptive to change, we are individuals that are constantly evolving. Every single day, you can choose to be somebody new. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're being fake. You're just, you're just evolving. But in terms of your identity, you have to think about who this successful person that you ultimately want to become and what type of habits and systems do they have going on behind the scenes that make them successful. I guarantee just because they wanted to be a millionaire, because they wanted to be a billionaire, they didn't get there overnight. When you think about somebody like Jordan, Jordan is my absolute favorite basketball player of all time. If you want to talk about uh, who's better, we can talk about it. But Michael Jordan, he had this discipline about himself with his systems and his process going on behind, behind the scenes. That's the reason he was so successful. When you think about somebody like Mark Cuban, when you think about somebody like Steve Jobs before he passed, think about Warren Buffett, think about Jay-Z, any successful dope business owner doing a thing, I guarantee the thing that made them successful and that is keeping them successful is their habits and systems going on behind the scenes. And they've literally changed the way that they thought about themselves and who they wanted to become. They figured out, oh, if I want to be at this level, I got to do this level of things. And this is the most exciting part, y'all. You can literally change who you are and live the best life that you ever dreamed of. You just got to work on the things behind the scenes. Now, listen, there are certain systems and processes that you currently have going on that are hurting you. Why not incorporate some that can help you? Think about this, y'all. You got some right now that's hurting you because you've created a discipline. You've created a habit of sitting on the couch, watching TV for hours, not doing anything productive. That's a system for you. That's a straight up system. Why don't you change the system and say, look, I'm going to still watch TV sometime, but I'm going to cut it back. So I'm only allowed to watch two hours of TV every single day. I'm only allowed to do this many hours on the uh, Xbox or any game system. I'm only allowed to stay on the phone with my friends for 30 minutes because after that, I feel like we're going to be talking about crazy stuff and it's going to be very unproductive. 
This is how you're going to be massively successful. But I got some more for you. The alternative is to build identity-based habits. With this approach, we start by focusing on who we, are, who we wish to become. Here's where it gets really good and juicy, y'all. Behavior that is um, incongruent with the self will not last. Hope y'all catching this. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. We're talking about some deep stuff. We're talking about atomic habits, y'all. Many of my clients, hey, Kay, I've told about atomic habits, y'all. Make sure that y'all read. And if, you, if you're my client and you're listening now and you ain't been listening to the atomic habits, I need you to go back into that book. It's right on YouTube. And then go get it from Amazon, Atomic Habits. So a behavior that is incongruent with the self will not last. You may want more money, but if your identity is someone who consumes rather than creates, then you'll continue to be pulled towards spending rather than earning. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. I'm going to say that part again. You may want more money, but if your identity is someone who consumes rather than creates, then you'll continue to be pulled towards spending rather than earning. Here, 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 here's where it gets good too, y'all. Here's where it gets good. Nail body. Nail body. I asked my wife to schedule my first ever uh, manicure. Now, this is from Atomic Habits. These are some notes that he has inside the book. I asked my wife to schedule my first ever manicure, he said. My thought was that if I started paying to maintain my nails, I wouldn't chew them. And it worked, but not for the monetary reason. Moment, momentary reason. What happened was the manicure made my fingers look really nice for the first time. The manicurist even said that other than the chewing, I had really healthy, attractive nails. Suddenly, I was proud of my fingernails. Did y'all catch that? Suddenly, I was proud of my fingernails. So this person that was struggling with nail biting for the longest time, they kept biting their nails all the time. Their wife suggested, why don't you get a manicure? Why don't you just get somebody to do your nails real nice? He went there, got the nails done. After looking at his nails being done for the first time, looking beautiful, looking nice, he decided, you know what? I ain't going to be biting these nails no more. They look way too nice for me to be biting on them. But instead of focusing on why it wasn't working, why to have it this, why this, I want this particular goal, he decided to change the system going on behind the scenes. He decided to change his image of himself and who he was, and automatically he was no longer biting his nails. So look, here's my notes, y'all. Here's some more stuff. The ultimate form of intrinsic motivation is when a habit becomes part of your identity. It's one thing to say, I'm the type of person who wants this. It's something very different to say, I'm the type of person who is this. Woo! Come on, y'all. Come on. I'm going to read that part again. It's one thing to say that I'm the type of person who wants this or that. Like, look, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be successful. I want to have this massive business. This is what you say that you want. It's something very different to say, I'm the type of person who is this. And I'm going to take it a step further. I'm the type of person who gets things like this. I'm the type of person who takes, takes charge of his life. His business steps up, does what he's supposed to do. I'm not just a person that's sitting around wishing and hoping and praying for magical things to happen. No, I'm the type of person that gets results because I am this person. Come on, y'all. We ain't at church, but if I have to take you there, no problem. And I will take you to church if I need to. I want you to be able to realize, y'all, that you got something amazingly dope, brilliant inside of you. Now it's literally just time to show up that way. Like we can't, we can't wait in order to get the blessing, to get the opportunity, start acting like we deserve. You got to know deep down inside. I'm the type of person that deserves stuff like that. So that's why I'm getting rich. I'm the type of person that deserves to have abundance. That's why I got it. I'm the type of person that deserves to have a healthy family and that's to walk in abundance and take trips and buy nice cars and buy nice things and be able to tell my kids yes all the time. Some of y'all have been telling your kids no for way too many times. And it's not no because this product or this service is not safe for them. You just know mommy and daddy ain't got the money. But what if something transitioned inside of your life, inside of your habits and your systems that literally got you to the place where you was always saying yes? The only time you said no is when you know it wasn't safe for them. But listen, y'all, again, the ultimate form of intrinsic motivation is when a habit becomes part of your identity. 
When, when these habits become a part of who you are, you ain't even got to try to do it no more. Like when I go to the gym, I don't go to the gym because I want to look good. I don't go to the gym because I enjoy being there and the bar seem cool to hold. Nah, it's because of this is who I am. This is my brand. This is what I got to do. This is part of the business. This is why I go to the gym. It's literally become a part of my habit. When I drink water, I drink water not because it tastes so good. For all those people that's out there, I don't like water. It's just nasty. I get it. I understand. But you're not drinking water for the taste. You're drinking it for the benefit. So look, it's one thing to say I'm the type of person who wants this. I'm going to go back to it. It's something very different to say I'm the type of person who is this. I'm that type of person. Look, new identities require new evidence. If you keep casting the same votes you've always cast, you're going to get the same results you've always had. If nothing changes, nothing is going to change. Come on, y'all. You, y'all probably have heard that before. If nothing changes, nothing is going to change. You want to be successful. You want to have this great business. You want your brand to explode. You want more views on your reels on TikTok and all of this stuff. None of that is going to change until you do. And in order for you to change, you got to start changing the systems behind the scenes. You got to start studying other brands. You got to start studying your own brand. And how dare you? You just got into business, y'all. And I'm just picking on a couple of y'all that, that's like this. Just a couple of y'all. Everybody else can close your ears. But how dare you just got into the business a year ago and you're expecting yourself to get a million dollars in profit? When 80 to 90% of the other business owners, we've been putting in work for years and we ain't got that yet. But then you just pop on the scene because you've been hoping and wishing and praying for a long time that God is supposed to rain down the blessings on you without you doing any work behind the scenes. You ain't studied, you ain't researched, you don't even know your industry, you don't even know who you serving for real. But you're supposed to get a million dollars. You're not even really creating a product that's going to be helping someone. You're not even identifying these pain points and talking about them. So how are these people supposed to know how they're supposed to spend their money with you? They're supposed to get so excited. And I don't think, I don't think it's wrong to want a million dollars. But I think it's wrong to want a million dollars and know deep down the side that you're not going to do the work to get there. I think that part is wrong. So look, new identities require new evidence. If you keep casting the same votes you always cast, you're going to get the same results you've always had. If nothing changes, nothing will ever change. It is simple to, it's a simple two-step process. Decide the type of person you want to be. Prove it to yourself with small wins. Y'all catch that? So you decide the type of person that you want to be and you prove it to yourself by having these small wins, by literally changing some of these habits, these systems that you got going on behind the scenes. I have a friend who lost 100 pounds by asking herself, what would a healthy person do? Think about that. Like, So you that person maybe want to lose a little bit of your gut, maybe want to have more success on, on social media, want, maybe want to get more sales. Like, What would a healthy person do? What would a successful person do? So each and every day, yes, it's now Saturday, it's Sunday, and you really want to take some time off. Like, what would a successful people do on a Saturday? Like, are they still trying to contact people? Are they still trying to build their business and brand? Or are they just sitting back doing absolutely nothing? You got to ask yourself, wherever you want to be, and you know that somebody is already there, what did they do or what do they do on a daily basis? What do they do on a weekly basis? The formation of all habits is a feedback loop, a concept uh, that's explored in Atomic Habits. Uh, but it's important to let your values, principles, and identity drive the loop rather than your results. So basically, let your principles, your values, your identity that you have of yourself, let that drive your results. The focus should always be on becoming the type of person that you want to be become, not getting a particular outcome. So instead of like, I want to get a million dollars, I'm going to keep doing what millionaires do every single day until I get there. Y'all catch that? So instead of like, my goal is to become a millionaire by July 27, 2024. No, I'm not. I'm going I'm to I'm destroy that goal. I'm going to just practice doing what millionaires do every single day until I get there. Now, it's probably going to happen way before 2024, simply because I'm not focused on that result. I'm focused on doing the actions every single day that I know I'm going to get there. The process of building a habit can be divided into four simple steps. Q, craving, response, reward. You do not crave smoking a cigarette. Here's an example. You crave the feeling of relief it provides. You are, you are not motivated by brushing your teeth, 
but rather by the feeling of a clean mouth. You do not want to turn on the television. You want to be entertained. Y'all see, it's all of these different things that are cues, that are cravings, that are rewards. Every craving is linked to a desire to change your internal state. The thoughts, feelings, and emotions of the observer are what forms a cue into a craving. The response is the actual habit you perform, which can take the form of a thought or an action. Here's where it gets good. Whether a response occurs deep, the, whether a response occurs depends on how motivated you are and how much friction is associated with the behavior. Rewards are the end goal of every habit. The cue is about noticing the reward. The craving is about wanting the reward. The response is about obtaining the reward. Do y'all see? It's, it's all of these different things that's, that's going on behind the scenes that you're not even thinking about. Like, so we, like the example of you turning on the TV it's not that you want to watch the TV. You want to be entertained. You, you see a big old thing of food in front of you. And you're like, man, I'm about to smash. The goal is not to really enjoy the food because most of us don't sit there and enjoy the food. We sit there and smash the food because you want to relieve this hunger pain that you have inside of you. The goal of getting a million dollars for most people is not because you want to hold a million dollars in your hand or keep looking at the account to say, wow, I got a million dollars. The goal oftentimes and the reason why you want to be a millionaire is so that you can buy the things that you want to buy. And you believe that having a million dollars will give you the abundance that you've always been praying and looking for. So you have to see what some of these cues are, what some of these cravings are, what some of the responses, and what are some of these rewards so that you can handle it that way. All right, I'm going to get out of here soon. Um, the first purpose of rewards is to satisfy your craving. Second, rewards teach us which actions are worth remembering in the future. If a behavior is insufficient in all of its four stages, it will not become a habit. So here's what we need to do. Eliminate the cue and your habit will never start. Reduce the craving. Come on, y'all. Reduce the craving and you won't experience enough motivation to act. Make the behavior difficult and you won't be able to do it. Let me stop there for a minute. If, if you know that right now you have some very bad habits, these things just kind of hurting your business, not allowing you to get to the next level, then maybe you make that particular behavior somewhat difficult in order to perform. So if you know you're that person that's just scrolling on Instagram, you're not very productive, maybe you put the app on a different screen. Maybe it's not on your home screen, on your phone. Maybe you put it someplace a little bit different so you're not tempted to keep opening up doing uh, a lot of scrolling. If you're also that person that gets distracted by all these notifications, then now maybe you need to go to Instagram, turn off those notifications like I do because I don't even have notifications on my phone for, for Instagram. Nothing pops up. The only notifications I get is like email because I know that I'm easily distracted by dumb stuff. And if I keep seeing all of these notifications come up, somebody sent me a message, somebody responded to this, I don't need to see that. So maybe you're like me and need to just turn off those notifications and that will help you to reduce and almost eliminate that particular distraction, which has literally become a bad habit. Okay, so the problem phase includes the cue and the craving. And it is when you realize that something needs to change. The solution phase includes the response and the reward. And it is when you take action and achieve the change you desire. You don't need to be aware of the cue for a habit to begin. You can notice an opportunity to take action without dedicating conscious attention to it. So if you know that something is kind of like this cue of like, hey, I'm tripping, I'm, I'm going back into this bad habit, or look, this cue is actually telling me I'm being very productive. I'm getting excited about this particular thing. I'm getting a lot of positive energy by working on this part of the project. Then maybe that's something that you lean into. Like as a business owner, you don't need to do every aspect of your business. Maybe you're that person that is not good at explaining what it is that you do. Maybe you're that person that's just not good at social media, so you can hire out for these particular things. Maybe you're not good at writing emails and responding back to people or knowing what to say on a sales call, so you can hire other people to do things for you. This does not mean that you're sitting back and doing absolutely nothing. You figure out these areas within your business that you come alive, that you actually enjoy, and let somebody else do that. You'll start to get these cues. 
When you get these cues, you'll start to realize what part of the system you need to be heavily involved in, what part you don't need to be involved in within your business. But the same thing with changing your habits. You have to identify these things. Okay, here's the last part that I want to cover, and I'm going to let y'all go. It's called a habit scorecard. We need a point and call system for our personal lives. That's the origin of the habit scorecard, which is a simple exercise you can use to become more aware of your behavior. Now, this is good, y'all. Take notes on this if you can. Make a list of your daily habits. Make a whole list of them. The stuff that you know that you do consistently every single day. Ask yourself, is this a good habit, a bad habit, or a neutral habit? If it is a good habit, write a plus next to it. If it's a bad habit, write a minus next to it. If it is a neutral habit, write an equal sign. If you're having trouble determining how to rate a particular habit, here is a question I like to ask. Does this behavior help me become the type of person I wish to become? Does this habit cast a vote or against my desired identity? The first step to changing bad habits is to be on the lookout for them. If you feel like you need to uh, need help in this particular step, you can try pointing and calling in your own life. Say out loud the action you are thinking or taking and what the outcome will be. So when you think about performing a particular habit, call that thing out and say, this is a particular outcome. I, I know that if I do this particular thing, I'm not going to have success. I know that if I do take this particular action, I'm getting closer towards success. So ultimately, as I said a little bit while, a while ago, you're trying to get to this person that you ultimately want to become. If this is a millionaire, if this is a successful person, whatever. These habits, they have to be drawing you closer towards that goal. Because if they're drawing you further away from them, then you know that that's one that's not actually helping you. So you use that call and response. I mean, that call and um, point and call and action to do that. Now, last thing that I want to talk about is you guys tapping in and getting a copy, getting used to this new life that you know that you want to walk into. Like get this in your mind on a consistent basis that this is the person I want to become. Have that copy inside your mind on a consistent basis. So as you're taking actions, as you as you're using these different habits to help you, you know that you're headed in the right direction. And if you start to notice some habits that are actually hurting you and making you not have the progress that you want, then you say, okay, I got to slow down over there. I got to use some of these strategies that Manny talked about. This live will be saved and you'll be able to... Uh, Tap in, but y'all can click the link in my bio if you guys want any resources. I got some really great ones just for you. My Brandon Secrets course is available now. Um, you can take advantage of that. It's absolutely dope. It's a bunch of modules teaching you how to have a very successful, b profitable brand. I'll say that a profitable brand on social media, literally just by you showing up, presenting your product, identifying your target market, talking to them on a consistent basis, building relationships. It's super duper dope. I love y'all. Peace and blessings. If you need anything, y'all reach out. Peace.